Hi everyone, welcome back. In this lecture we're going to look at methods for computing the area of a surface, in particular surfaces that come about from revolving a region about an axis, so surfaces of revolution. What or how can we compute their surface area? Uh, just as a quick example, let's look at the curve y equals square root of x. Imagine we revolve it around the x-axis. What that does is it traces out a surface. So there's our surface. What we've done in the past is we worked out the volume of the resulting solid that's enclosed by this surface. Now our focus is on what is the area of the surface. So what is our surface area? That's our question. We're imagining that there's no end cap here. Now, if you think back to the area problem, very first problem we worked on in this course, the idea was to find a method for computing areas of regions that didn't necessarily have straight sides. So we started with the basic idea that, well, we know the area of a rectangle. And how do we find areas of more complicated regions? We slice it up and approximate them with rectangles and then take the number of slices going to infinity. So we started with this basic idea of we knew the area of a rectangle. Similarly, when we did the volumes of uh, solids, we started with the basic idea that we knew some basic volumes. Uh, for the most part, they were volumes of cylinders, really, really thin cylinders that we got as uh, sort of slices of our volume. We found the volumes of these little, small, thin cylinders, and then summed them all up and looked at the integral. So we're integrating over these cross-sectional areas is what we were. So we started with volumes of cylinders as our basic building blocks. For this one, surface area, we're going to, again, have to start with some basic shapes that we know the surface area of, and then use those as our building blocks. And the basic shape we're going to work with is what's called a frustum of a cone. So it's, you can imagine a cone where you've cut the top off it. So here's our basic shape. So cone, circular bottom, circular top, and we're interested in the surface area of that. So I'm going to label a few things here. The top radius we'll call R1, the bottom radius we'll call R sub 2, and then there's this side length here, which we'll call L. Now for this object, we need to know its surface area. That's going to be our basic building block. The surface area of this turns out to be 2 pi times the average of the top circle and the bottom circle's radius. So that's R1 plus R2 over 2 times the side length L. I like to write this as 2 pi times r bar times l, where r bar is the average of the radii. So this is the form that we're going to be using. This is our basic, basic surface area that we're going to work with. Now you may ask, well, how do we know that? Uh, so I've included uh, the calculation of how, why we know the surface area of this is 2 pi times uh, this r bar times l in a separate video. It's a short little video, but I just wanted to include it separately because some people may know this already, and I want to jump right to the, the main result, surface areas of more general, general shapes. Um, if you don't know this result, I get at it through first looking at a cylinder and then a cone and then the first of a cone here. Um, so you can go ahead and just look at the description below, and it's the last video in the description. And, and you can have a look at that, and it'll justify where this, this area, this surface area formula comes from. So that's our building block. So now let's go ahead and try to use this to come up with a method for finding surface areas in general. So what we've presented down here is our main result. We have a curve, some interval of consideration, and we take that curve and we revolve it around the axes. Either we revolve it around the x-axis, or we revolve it around the y-axis. Uh, depending on which axis you choose, uh, the integral that will give us the surface area will be slightly different. Now, in the first case, when we revolve it around the x-axis, the integral that gives the surface area is the integral of 2 pi times the function 
times the square root of 1 plus the derivative squared dx. You might remember this. This is the thing that came up when we were looking at arc length. This was what we called the arc length differential, and we denoted that by ds. So we could write this in a bit shorter form as 2 pi times f of x times ds. This is a nice way to remember it. Um, 2 pi times f of x times the arc length differential. The arc length differential is this uh, 1 plus the derivative squared all square rooted dx. So it's a nice shorthand to remember it. And we can do the same thing here. It's the integral uh, from a to b of 2 pi times x times ds. So looking at it this way, we see revolving around the x-axis or revolving around the y-axis. There's only a slight change in the, in the integral that represents that surface area. Either it's f of x or x. It turns out that there is an even simpler way to remember the integral and which one it is. So a much more general version which we're going to write down. And how are we going to write this down? Well, I'm actually going to justify where these formulas come from. And we'll see that the way we justify them, there's a nice general way to remember these formulas. So let's look at an example. So I'm imagine I've got a curve and I revolve it around an axis. Doesn't matter whether it's the x-axis or y-axis in this case, but I'll just, for concreteness, I'll draw it around the x-axis. So there's our resulting, let's see if I can get it symmetric here, our resulting surface. Okay, so it looks something like that. Now what do we want to do? Well, we want to proceed as we've done in all cases where we're trying to solve a problem, either area or volume, and that is slice it up into a bunch of really thin slices and then approximate those slices with things that we know. So what we can imagine doing is if we slice it up into really thin slices, I'll draw a little thin slice here, then when we do the revolution of a really thin slice, a really thin portion of that curve, then what comes out is a shape that sort of looks like this. What kind of shape is that? Well, it looks like that frustum of a cone. It looks like that thing we had above. So let's zoom in on this. So I'm going to take that thing and I'm just going to draw it here. And it looks something like this where I'm going to exaggerate some of the properties just so we can get a good vision of what's going on here. So I've made it a lot wider than it should be. It's really, really thin, but I made it wider so I can start adding a few more details to the diagram. So there's our ith slice. There's some radii of the ends. Let's say R1 is the left-hand radii and R2 is the right-hand. There's a length along here. And we're imagining that these slices are so thin that this length is almost, this, uh, this side is almost straight. It's almost a straight line. It's really, really thin. It's almost a straight line. What's the length of this? Well, that's delta s, the change in the arc length. So that's delta s. That's that side length there. And for the surface area of this i slice, well, we know it's going to be 2 pi times the average radius. What's the average radius? Well, the average radius is going to be somewhere between those two extremities. So maybe I'll do this in a different color. The average radius is going to be somewhere in here. There's going to be some x value between those endpoints where, let's call it xi star, where the average radius, r1 plus r2 over 2, is equal to the function value at xi star. So this average radius is some f of xi star. So that's 2 pi times the average radius. And again, we'll scroll back up. What else do we need? Well, the surface area of that object is 2 pi times the average radius times the side length. What's the side length? Well, the side length in this case is our delta s. So that's times delta s. So there is an expression for the surface area of this ith slice, just one of these slices. So what's the total surface area? The total surface area is obtained by summing up over all of the slices. So we look at the sum of these SIs as i goes from 1 to n. And then we look at the limit. 
the limit as n goes to infinity. And as the slices get thinner and thinner and thinner, we get more and more slices. That's the total surface area. That's what I'll call capital S. Now what's the limit? Well, this is the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum of 2 pi f of xi star delta s. Uh, i goes from 1 to n. i goes from 1 to n. Now we look at this limit and say, well, that's just a Riemann sum. So that can be converted to an integral. What is it? It's the integral from the left endpoint a to the right endpoint b, a to b, of 2 pi times the function f of x. Now what are the delta s's? Well, that's, that's the length of the arc. So as the object gets thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner, these delta s's, they're approaching the arc length differential. So they're going to ds. So there is our formula for the surface area. It's 2 pi f of x times the arc length differential. And this is where we know that ds is actually just shorthand for 1 plus f prime of x squared dx. So that's the full form of the integral there. Now the thing to keep in mind with our derivation is we actually derive something a little bit more significant. What's the function? Where is that coming from? This f of x. Well, that's coming from f of x i star. Where is that coming from? That's coming from this average radius. So really, what's sitting here, this f of x? That's just the distance at each point along the curve is from the axes of rotation. In other words, that's just the radius. So what we found here is that there's a more general statement we can make. The more general statement is that the surface area is the integral from a to b of 2 pi times the radius times the arc length differential. And this is exactly what these two are specific versions of, depending on which axes you rotate about. So if you're rotating about the x-axis, you're rotating about the x-axis. What's the radius in that case? Well, if you're integrating along the x-axis and you're rotating along the x-axis, then your radius will be the function value at x. So that's what we have here. The radius is the function value. What happens if you revolve around the y-axis? Well, let's just have a quick look. I'm taking a region and I'm revolving around the y-axis here. Maybe my region is from A to B. What I need to know is, okay, I integrate from A to B. 2 pi times the radius. What's the radius? The radius would be just this distance here to each point along the curve. What is that? That's just the x value. So it would be 2 pi times the x value ds. And that's this one. That's the radius. So this is the general surface area formula. This is what we're going to use all over the place. It's the integral of 2 pi times the radius times the arc length differential. And you figure out what the radius is and the arc length differential is depending on which variable you want to integrate with respect to. So we can summarize this even more in a table where it depends on what variable you're integrating with respect to and which axes you are rotating about. So there's two choices for axes, either you're rotating about the x or y axes. There's two choices for variables, either using x or y. So there's really four different formulas you'll probably be using in any one situation. These are the four formulas, but they are all exactly special cases of the more general formula, which we will write down again. What's the general formula? The surface area is the integral from a to b, uh, starting and ending points of whichever variable you're working with, 2 pi times the radius times the arc length differential. So let's look at a number of examples where we apply this.